Hello everyone, 3D Hero here, and welcome back to today's build for Destiny 2. So, for today's build, we're going back to swords with another fantastic and versatile Warlock Sword build, which is capable of providing constant healing, fast ability regeneration, near unlimited grenades, and supers for days. Quite a while back, I uploaded a Titan build that focused on the use of the Stronghold Gauntlets and the new Seasonal Dawn mods to provide a stream of unlimited orbs for you and your team via the swords and also unlimited heavy energy as well, and it still is one of my best builds to date. Now I've decided to up the game with that build for the Warlock, and instead create a setup which would truly allow you to feel invincible and all so powerful against any ad you face. And all of this will be achieved with the Black Talon Exotic Sword, Nezrak Sin, and Bottom Tree Void. Let me tell you this, this build is nuts in terms of what it can do within a Strike or Horde-esque mode, as it stands ground perfectly with instant health regen on the go, and the fact that Black Talon has a mini AoE attack built into it, means that if things get too deep or too heavy on your end, then blast them away with a bit of void on your end. And also don't worry about running out of heavy ammo, as we've got that covered of course within the build. If you're a fan of Dark Souls, and I know a lot of you guys here have originally played Dark Souls, and have played around with the idea of lifesteal builds back in the old glory days, then let me remind you of that glory once more, with this incredible Devourlock build. So the chosen subclass that we will be incorporating and overall using for 80% of the build will be the Atonement of Hunger, and we will be using all of the subclass perks to our advantage. Now there are two perks that will be incorporated into our sword and exotic, which is a Feed the Void, which will allow us to consume our own grenade for the trade-off of health regen per kill, as well as the Insatiable perk, which extends our Devour ability and also recharges your grenade per kill we get. Now, two perks on their own are great if you're someone who struggles to survive against most harder content, providing you with near perfect fill of health regen and uptime, but when combined with the exotic Nezrak Sin and the Void Sword, specifically the Black Talon, we get a Harbinger of Death build, which becomes a league of its own in terms of what you can do. Truly, just the subclass perk, Nezrak Sin and Black Talon combined, pretty much completes the build for those who want to try it out there and then without expanding further. But where's the fun in that exactly? Think about it, with Devour Effect active with each kill you get, it will provide instant health regen and grenade energy to repeat the process as many times as you like. And then, after all that's done and over with, you can use your super for a larger finisher, and then repeat the process as many times as you wish. It's so simple, you can create this build in your own sleep, it's that simple and easy to put together and just work straight out the package. For the grenades, any are fine to use, because at the end of the day, you're just going to devour them anyways to proc health regen instantly. But if you want to go up against something much more larger, and just say for example your sword can't easily kill them, then I would recommend the Vortex Grenade for its damage, duration, and versatility for all scenarios it's based in. For the weapons, you're going to need to have the Black Talon with its catalyst fully unlocked, so we can produce orbs of our own upon kills, and then the rest of the weapon need to be void related, so you can work with the Nezrak Sin Exotic Perk. Bonus point if they're void and fully masterwork. Now, out of everything here, the most important weapon you need to have is the Black Talon Sword, fully masterwork, as with the mods and subclass we're working with, it will allow you to create near infinite orbs from the multiple swings and kills you get from your sword. But also, it will feed back into your Nezrak Sin to recharge your void abilities for increased uptime, thus allowing you to rely on your grenades or melee more often and repeat for as long as you want, etc, etc. Now, we could have gone with any other Void Sword to achieve this, which you're right, as you could pull the stun off with any Void Sword the same way. However, I wanted to have the Black Talon R2 ability at my disposal, as it's much more faster and powerful compared to other Swords R2. Plus, safer in terms of giving you a distance, and also the fact that its catalyst increases damage for short duration after a block, which makes the weapon even more dangerous and powerful against the ultra bosses, who are known to cause a lot of problems for sword users in general. Another important fact to take note over this is that for you to create tons of orbs at your disposal via the charge by light mods, you will need to get the Black Talon Catalyst, which is RNG related sadly, so you will need to play the game quite a bit to get it to drop. But without this catalyst, you can still play with the weapon and build like normal. However, a lot of things with the build will need to be changed to accommodate this. Your primary and secondary now is down to you to pick what you feel is best for you. So a AR, SMG, sidearm, you name it. As long as it's void, then it's all good. 
I would say if you have recluse or no hunger with demolitionist or just damage buffing perks, then those are some ideal and great void weaponry to look out for. Your primary on the other hand can be a standard kinetic weapon with perks that fit the environment you're in, so rampage, kill clip, fill prep, explosive rounds, etc. Anything to make your life more easier. But out of everything here, I'd recommend you try and get the standard weapons that can roll osmosis, which can turn your standard kinetic weapon into the following subclass that you have equipped it. So in our case here, ours would be void, and that would be one the moment we go ahead and use our grenade, and then it will basically change back to kinetic again once we stow it. As we have the Nesrak Sin, Void Ability Regeneration Boost at hand, we can utilise this to always have the perk active if we can get in a situation where a sword can't reach an add or do the necessary damage that a sword can't do because of damage we're in and by switching to our Osmosis weaponry will allow us to retain our Void bonus and, well, you know, go from there. Ideally, the Buzzard Sidearm is a good weapon to use with its multi-selecting perks to work off from and Osmosis perk available on hand. Plus, it's fully masterwork, so no need to worry about getting a masterwork version of yourself. Now, of course, sidearms might not be for everyone, which is understandable, we all have our different types. So, if this isn't the type of weaponry for you, then look into the following ones that can roll osmosis. For example, Steel Feather Repeater, Breach Light Sidearm, Patron of Lost Causes, or the Cold Front SMG. Whichever one you choose, be sure to find the one that suits you, so you can have a backup weapon in case your main weaponry runs out. For the stats, well, funny enough, our main three stats are all balanced out around the mid 50s, with resilience being 58, recovery being 57, and grenades being 56. There's nothing else in this stat slot that needs to be focused on for this build this time round, which thankfully for some means less time to try to get the near perfect or identical stats. The only thing I would say you could boost further is your resilience, so you can tank more hits, but except from that, thanks to the subclass to our perk, I don't think generally you're going to need it at all. For the armour, the Nesrek Sin is a must-have for this sword, Devour Lock build we're going for, as without it, we can't make full use of our grenades, and if we can't make full use of our grenades, then we can't make full use of our Devour perk. And if we can't make use of that, then basically the build kind of loses identity. You can still use the build though without the helmet, but you will need to greatly invest into the discipline stat to the 60 or 70 ranges, maybe even higher than that and maybe look into having a demolitious perk available for both or just one of your main primary and secondary weapons, if need be I would say. The rest of the armour will require you to have 3 Arc Affinity Seasonal Dawn pieces to make use of the extra sword mods, and then one Void, Solar or Arc Affinity SOD chest piece so you can use the Taking Charge mod. I would recommend you get a Arc Affinity chest SOD piece so you can have the Sword Reserves mod for increasing your sword's overall reserves. Now for the mods, we do have the following. Head, Recovery and Heavy Ammo Finder mod. Arm, Resilience, Pulse Rifle Loader and Strike and Light mod. Chest, Recovery, Unflinching Sidearm and Taking Charge mod. Leg, Resilience and Sword Scavenger x2 mod. Wall of Bond, Absolution, Bleeding Edge and High Energy Fire mod. Right, so as the build is now complete, let's talk about how it performs out on the field, and the one thing I mentioned earlier is how I wanted to create a close range but constant lifesteal sword build that would take from my previous titan build and then transfer over to my warlock sword build instead. With the use of Atonement Hunger active and using our Devour perk to increase healing regeneration per kill, the Nesrak Sin and Zolic ability kicking in for any void weapon kills made, and the ever so lovely Masterwork Black Talon available for further work in hand in hand with Nesrak Sin and subclass, we have now created a build that will allow the user to sustain themselves in the vast majority of fights they are in with enough firepower to sow the most harder focus content with your sword, melee or grenades at your infinite disposal. On top of that, we further enhance the build by providing the Strike Lightning mod for Orbs of Light generation for allies, which in theory will benefit us as well for stacking charge by light when they use their supers, and then also have higher energy fire plus absolution mods to further increase our damage and allow us to have more health regen than we currently do. Which sounds odd to have, but in my playing around with the build, I've noticed sometimes having just the Vile Perk active won't always be the same grace you'll need to survive. So this is just to be safe and sure. The issue with my Titan Sword build, the Throne Slayer set, was that although powerful in attacks and guarding, which had the chance of the user to regain health depending on how hard hitting the attack was, it just wasn't tanky enough in terms of tanking damage, 
which meant I have to either rely on my Titan subclass to create an Oath Shield to survive most fights or just take cover. But this only affected me when facing the much more tougher enemies or going against the more tougher content such as the raids or the higher tier nightfalls or even the Hoa Menagerie. So let's say we take a look at this build into 950 strikes as a test example. My Throne Slayer build will have no problems in terms of dishing out damage and can easily take out the most high ranking mobs with a few light attacks or just use the heavy attacks. Problem here though is that getting up close and personal can be risky if the enemy you're facing is tanky, like a ultra enemy that has shielding and stomp mechanics. Yeah, you guys know which one I'm talking about. With issues like that, it's 50 50 in terms of knowing whether you'll do fine or not, as you may be able to kill them easily with no hassle, or you may get killed quickly and very painfully. Our Nesrox Talon build looks at our Titan build and focuses on improving around its weaknesses, which here, and as shown within the build, is exactly what we managed to achieve. Going into a 950 Nightfall now is a lot more easier and safer for me as I can get up close and personal to any enemy I face, but still have the high chance of survival thanks to the subclass of our ability, Nesrax in Ability Regen, and the Absolution Sass Strike Lightning mod combo, which will aid in the Black Talon producing orbs to heal ourselves while on the go. I also forget to mention that the build also uses the Bleeding Edge mod, which provides super energy per sword kill. So with near infinite sword heavy available, plus Bleeding Edge, plus sword's orbs of light you'll produce, equals even more power to use against bosses when need be. This build does not sound all round great for the new casual players who want to try a sword focused build, but one that focuses around safety and survivability, rather than the brute strength. You have the damage which is near comparable to my Titan build, but you have the survivability which in the end trumps all, as more survivability means in theory more DPS but that can be subjugated. Now for the downsides of the build, I have noticed that while having the Devour perk and Absolution perk both active at the same time can make you feel invincible to some, you can still die by enemy damage if you A become the main focus point of all enemies fire, or B get completely surrounded and from the gameplay point of view, you can see that just in action which is also my fault as I bit off more than I can chew. In that situation, we can easily get out of that by using a black tower on heavy attack to create an opening, but sometimes this won't always be the case, especially against the bosses or ultras you may face, who are a lot more tankier in the hits. Unless you get stunned off them, this won't always end pretty for you. Another issue I've noticed which isn't such a big problem is just your black talent ammo supply. Sometimes you get so much into the build when playing around with it is that sometimes you may notice you're either A, not run out of ammo ever which is great, basically you can keep killing as much as you like, or B, completely run out of ammo, and some instances it's 50-50 between the two. Now as you're using a sword for 95% of the build, it's important to make sure you have as much sword ammo zone perks available to sustain your build so that you never have to worry about running out. Thankfully this build has already done that anyway with all the points I've covered in terms of the mods, but if you're someone that doesn't have the mods, be sure to try and get these mods that are kind of easy to get from either just going through Zavala by ranking up his packages or just ranking up Shax's packages, those two are probably the most easiest way to get these sword reserve mods. Except from that, that's pretty much it as I tend to iron out all issues well beforehand so that you guys don't have to worry about it. So with this build now complete, you can now bring out your inner berserker warrior and go nuts against the wave as you face, since you know, you can't really die, unless you get yourself into a very tough situation, which with that being the case, is kind of your fault, but I'm sure you guys can survive that. Anyways, have fun and modify the build to your own taste. So if you enjoyed the video, then please by all means leave a like and a sub. Also follow me on Twitter to keep up to date with Destiny content if you dig that type of stuff, link is always down below. But once again guys, thank you all for stopping by, and I'll see you guys in the next one.